Welcome to Tangential Soup, a weekly podcast discussing life in Australia, technology, food, finance and the like, hosted by myself, David Caddy, Melbourneian, independent developer and tea enthusiast, as well as my good childhood friend, Alexander Carr, Sydney Sider, karate practitioner and lover of adventure. Interesting this week, Alex. Um, Sorry to keep you waiting. No, that's that's all right. Um, wow, I bet that I bet that phone weighs an absolute ton. Yeah. <laughs> I only put it on there, so this is a gain from Mobile World Congress from a week or so ago. Now, um, the company Energizer, known for batteries has uh, made a phone, a smartphone, an Android phone, with uh, an 18,000 milliwatt, milliamp hour battery, which it says can last about a week of sort of typical usage, probably light usage. I only thought it would be interesting to run this past you, as I know you did in the past buy a phone with a ridiculously large battery, although it didn't last particularly long, if I remember no, correctly. No, you do remember correctly. Um, it made a tragic end. I dropped it, yes. Yeah, that's right. In the toilet. Oh, um, in the what? toilet. <laughs> I didn't know that. Not, not in the toilet, like oh. in the bathroom, oh, okay. on the tiles in the bathroom. <laughs> it didn't go into the toilet. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I, this phone looks very similar to my other phone in the sense that it looks incredibly heavy, very cumbersome. Um, also, one kind of thing about my other phone was that um, the screen quality was quite poor, I think. I don't know what type of display it had, but it wasn't what you'd see in a normal smartphone. Um, and the uh, it was quite slow. I, I don't know what which version of Android it ran, but um, it, was, it, was, it was quite slow and laggy and it wasn't very powerful. Um, mm. And I'm kind of looking at this and thinking that it looks to be a pretty similar deal. Um, my logic behind buying the other one was that I, I like the idea of having a phone that will last forever um, because in the past I've done a lot of travel. Um, and kind of having that that phone that's not going to run out of battery halfway through, you know, a, a long plane ride or or something like that, and kind of pop you out the other end without without any juice is um, is appealing to mm. me. Um, obviously, more appealing in kind of less developed countries than, than if you're riding on a if you're flying first class and you've got all the charges you'll need. That's that's probably not not as much of a concern. But um, for me, I've I've always kind of slummed it a bit in the past and. And that was the logic behind getting that phone, but um, yeah, look, I don't know, maybe maybe Energizer have come out with something, something worthwhile here. What do you think? Well, in all honesty, it's probably more a publicity stunt than really a fantastic product. But it would be much faster than your other one. I think your other was was a fairly cheap Chinese brand that yes. brought it out from memory. Yes. Um, and this one, I imagine, will be a bit more expensive. And just because it's 2019 versus, I can't even remember how long ago you got that phone, but it will be pretty decent in terms of responsiveness and the screen quality and all that. It is an absolute brick. You could kill someone with this thing <laughs> quite easily. Um, Possibly yourself if you carry it around <laughs> too long. <laughs> yes, give you a bad back or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I do see appeal for a very small segment of the market. Like you were saying, if you if you're going away and travel and in developing worlds, then then this could be an interesting get. I don't know. Again, I think it's just more a publicity stunt. But I I just thought I'd run it past you because you actually did go out and buy the other one. This has probably got twice the battery of that other one. I think, or uh, almost. Well, I think the, the other, other one was, was 10, 000? ten 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 thousand. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yes. Well, look. I'm- I think I, I think like the shade right. of blue. <laughs> yes, yeah. Look, I suppose it looks okay. What? How far away do you think we are from having this kind of battery power in a slimmer phone? Because I mean, obviously, batteries are years, decades, more space efficient. Really? Well, look, it's possible tomorrow someone in a lab, because there's so many people working on battery technology, discovers something that all of a sudden will make it sort of feasible to, to shrink these things down and provide a much denser battery compa- capacity. But currently what we're seeing is a very gradual improvement 
in battery life. Um, right, okay. And just because of the sheer resources that are in there and we still haven't had that leap forward, I'm not anticipating it anytime soon. Right. You never know, but I, I'm imagining it'll just still be a slow crawl. Mm-hmm. It, it's a it's a hard problem. And it, when you look at the advancement in battery technology versus just rest of technology, it's going at a snail's pace. Really? Okay. Like more the wins that we've had in recent times. If you think about the the battery life of the very early smartphones versus now, and you would say now it's much, much better. Yes, we do have high capacity batteries, but most of that win has come from having faster processes that require less power. And because they're faster, can also get the job done so they can wake up and go to sleep very aggressively. Really? Okay. Yeah. Wow. So I suppose what's being worked on at the moment is, is technology, that, or battery technology that uses... Correct me if I'm wrong, lithium ion? Lithium ion is the best one currently for consumer products. There have been some advances I've heard recently or meant to be with other technologies, but then they always have some sort of downside. Um, And quite a few of them have the downside of if they're damaged in any way, they become quite volatile. Not to say that lithium ion batteries can't catch on fire in that but they're not really explosive kind of Mm -hmm. whereas some other battery technologies are not like that so you can't really have them in consumer products right okay um, even though they might have a little bit better capacity okay so that's why lithium ion has been the winner in the last decade two decades and it's going to be for the foreseeable future okay interesting yeah well Overall, I, I don't think I'd get it. Um, I had my, I had my kind of go at this type of technology, and obviously it didn't work out for me very well. Did you even use it on a trip or anything? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> well, I can't really for that point. Can't really get your uh, take on your experience with it then. No. <laughs> um, look, if it helps, I don't actually think it would have really helped me that much. I could have just used a battery pack and probably gotten exactly the same result with a slimmer phone true true and that, that i guess is the other option you can have a battery pack or like the mofi kind of cases that have a battery attached into it and then when you're not using it you don't have to be lugging it around all the time well that's it yeah yeah even though it's not quite as efficient but yeah <laughs> ah the future it doesn't yeah. always look the way you think it will no <laughs> Although maybe soon we'll have um, wireless charging that can be just charging things in the air. You so, see, my my thought was, or my understanding was that already existed. Can't you put your phone onto some kind of pad and it will charge it for you? Yes. Yes, you can. Most modern flagship smartphones these days, including Apple's, finally, um, have the chi wireless charging standard components built into them which means you can put it on any chi compatible charging mat there's also a competitor but i can't remember what it's called but you still have to be within i think it's a few millimeters it might be up to a centimeter in some cases but i think it's a few Mm. millimeters that Mm. it has to be the coils there's a coil on the charging side and a coil on the receiving side and it's through electro um, magnetism that it conducts the charge over space. So you can have a small air gap or any sort of gap if you've got a case or something, but it, it's not it's not really wireless. I mean, it is, but it's not over any sort of distance. What I'm sort of saying, and they have actually proven this to work, if you really ramp up the voltages of things, you can... <laughs> You can get things charging over a couple of feet in the lab. But obviously, that's not super practical, both from an efficiency standpoint and people are probably going to be a bit um, off-put by the amount of voltage you're kind of cranking through the air, although it doesn't exactly work like that. But, you know, people are skeptical. And it's kind of directional as well. You can't say, well, I mean... 
I think they're they're trying to work on that too. But currently, the technology is you sort of kind of point the I don't know what they would call it, but whatever you're trying to charge at, you point it at that, and it's a fairly targeted beam of energy, kind of. Um, yeah, which is obviously not very practical in you know you're walking around your house, you go in and out of it all the time. It's it's not real mm-hmm. great. Yeah. However, having said all that, there is this thing I saw the other day, which is a tiny little Bluetooth receiver, and it. Do you know NFC? It stands for near, uh, near field communication. I've never heard of it. No. Have you ever used your phone to pay for anything or scan something on, like tap it on the back and it does something? Yeah, I, I, I've never used it. No, but pair it with a speaker or something. Uh, no, I've never used that kind of method of pairing. No. Okay, but you're vaguely aware that that's a thing you can do. Oh, where you can bang your phone against things and make things happen. Yes. Yeah, so yes. So as far as it goes. <laughs> so in that scenario. Um, The NFC chip on the phone provides a very small amount of energy to the receiver. And the receiver, not always, you can have active receivers, but it's oftentimes passive, which means it's not powered in any way on its own. So when there's nothing near it, it's off. It doesn't have any current running through it. It's just a dumb lump of silicon. But as soon as you put it within range which in terms of nfc is more like a centimeter or two i think Mm -hmm. there might be variations of a few centimeters but anyway it's it's further than the wireless charging okay and there's this same sort of thing just using standard low energy um bluetooth or bluetooth 5 uh right okay that can work over a few meters might only be a couple of meters. But now we're starting to talk, right? Well, yes. If you can just use standard Bluetooth stuff and you're sending enough energy across to activate something, then that becomes pretty interesting. However, this chip is teeny tiny and at super low energy, so it can't actually do too much. (laughs) But this is how it starts. But, you know, you continue that thing forward, maybe one day we'll be able to have smartphones operated at a low enough energy consumption level Mm -hmm. or will be able to improve the the throughput of energy through these wireless communication standards Mm -hmm. to a point where you won't even need a battery in your wireless devices. You'll just kind of be sucking it off the air. Yes, okay, okay. Probably not going to work in rural environments, but I could imagine it probably working in a in a city. You know, you've got enough Wi-Fi and Bluetooth things just all over the place that you'll be able to pick up something from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. That that is that is a very interesting advancement. Again, probably not anytime soon, but that's another potential if we don't get the battery leap. Are you aware of how batteries charge exactly? Because I mean, I understand what you're trying to say, but how I mean, to me, I don't, I don't understand how the energy gets inside the battery. Well, in, in the case that I'm describing there, there is actually no battery. It's using the power as it's sort of coming across. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, right. So it's not feeding into anything. That's just using the existing power that's there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Although there's no reason why you couldn't harness that energy and then store it in a battery. But currently we're talking just such a tiny, minute amount of power that probably the the amount you would lose charging a battery it almost doesn't make sense but maybe one day we could do that too Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay that's very interesting let's talk about that lottery winner the anonymous mega millions winner walks away with more than one billion in cash so i think have you read the article do you want some time to peruse it or I can just chat well, about Well, based it. on the headline, it sounds like someone <laughs> won a billion dollars. And they someone were anonymous. Did and there was probably all news crews and things waiting for someone, but there was no one that showed their face or some such. Yeah. So, basically, this had a couple of interesting things for me. Um, so, this was this was based on a uh, an article in, published to ABC titled, Anonymous Mega Millions Winner Walks Away with More Than $1 Billion in Cash. Um, now, obviously, this was in the US because um, Australian 
or I don't think there are any other countries that jackpot as high as a billion dollars. Um, it is pretty crazy. It's ridiculous. So this happened in the US. Now, obviously, the US is a bit different to Australia in the sense that um, you get cashed on, or sorry, you get taxed on your winnings. Um, so lottery winnings are not tax free. Um, this person picked up $1.5 billion um, in, in winnings. Um, now, they've elected to take their, uh, their winnings as a lump sum payment. And my understanding with that is you actually get paid a little less um, than if you are to spread it out across. Uh, they've got certain options, I think, but maybe spread it out across 20 years. Um, you do have that option um, and you, you actually get paid more for it. And obviously, you then pay less tax on the winnings as well, I, I think. But why would anyone do that? Um, to me, it makes sense in some ways because then you're, you're kind of setting yourself up for life. Oh, sorry. So you could receive it over a 30-year period, actually, is how it works, not a 20-year period. What are you going to do with a billion dollars, I think, is the first question you've got to ask yourself. Um, this is enough money that anybody could live and spend comfortably for the rest of their life. You could live in absolute luxury and barely even scratch the surface of it. Um, a billion is obviously one with nine zeros, I, I think. Um, yes, that's a billion. Yeah. Um, Depending which, on which definition you go by. Uh, oh, okay. There are multiple definitions, are there? Yeah. There's the, the UK billion and the US billion. Oh, okay. That, uh, that's not something I am aware of. But I'm just trying to make the point that, you know, for the layperson, a billion dollars is literally an unimaginable amount of money. Because in the US, it's nine zeros. In in the UK, it's uh, 12 zeros. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It's a million million versus a thousand million, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I assume this would be... Yes. So they've... Well, they put it in Australian billions. The only billions I know are the nine zeros. Well, I think when you talk about money, I guess because US is the standard currency kind of on a global platform, I'm pretty sure when you say a billion dollars, you mean nine zeros. Yes. Also because yes. the other one would be even more insane. It would be ridiculous. And the fact of the matter is whether it's got nine zeros or 12 zeros actually doesn't make much difference True. to the average person. Because even the difference between the nine zeros and the 12 zeros, you're probably never going to see that in your life either. No. <laughs> Obviously. Um, but wouldn't you take the lump sum? Like I would totally take the lump sum, even if it's a well, little less. What, what's your logic for taking the lump sum? Two reasons. One, you could be hit mm -hmm. by a bus tomorrow, so why not take it all? Mm -hmm. Even though I, I know what you're saying, like there's no way you could really spend all that unless you were being insane. Mm -hmm. um, but secondly, you can take that invested however you want instead of however yes. they use things. Plus, there's no 100% guarantee that this lottery system is going to be operating in 30 years. I almost certainly will be, but there's no guarantee. Okay. Um, well, I think that the, the, they kind of they have to hold the cash in reserve. So basically, once it's yours, it's yours. They have that cash kind of sitting there. It's not spent on other things. There's no way they could actually lose the cash. Well, obviously, beyond some kind of financial corrupt person exactly. in the company kind of taking it. But um, and how could that possibly happen? Lehman well, Brothers. <laughs> 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 okay, good point. Good point. Um, but in my mind, it kind of makes more sense because as as a normal person, one, you're never going to be able to spend the money, but two, what are you going to be investing it in, I think is kind of what I tend to think of. Um, and of course, you could have an expert invest your money, but then it is, I don't know, I suppose, then... I haven't done the math, but you, I mean, you have to work it out. But in terms of the tax that you would lose, hmm. what if you just took that money and put it in a bank, right, and got the interest out of it? Like, how does that... Yeah, and when I said that, I actually, I think it was a bit foolish because it will probably, if it's a billion dollars over 30 years, you're probably still going to be in the highest tax bracket anyway. So, mm. yeah. I mean, obviously, I suppose a smaller percentage of your funds would be in the lower tax bracket. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I'm always thinking thing about inflation too, right? Like, well, that's true. Although with that, that amount of money, it probably doesn't super matter. But, you know, in in... 30 years time it's not going to be worth as much as it is now whereas if you invest it then theoretically mm. like if you put it into well i don't know depending on what it is but if you put it in like a super rock solid investment 
mm-hmm. as much as that can be, then at least that money will probably carry forward. You know, sort That's of true. the value will sort of stay the same versus going down over time. That's true. That's true. And that is a good point. That yeah. is a good point. I have the feeling the amount that they give you over the 30 year period takes into account inflation. Maybe yeah. that's the increase in it. Really? Um, I, I don't know for sure, though. Um, I do remember reading an article and they, they suggested that you should take it over a longer period of time. But the reason they suggested that was because a lot of lottery winners tended to splurge with their money. And it was just to make sure that your lottery winnings actually lasted. Obviously, with a billion dollars, it would be quite hard to spend it all, but it is definitely <laughs> possible to do. Um, See, I'd buy know, a couple of get... companies or something and just have fun with it. Well, yes, but I mean, let's face it, David, you're fairly sensible. Sensible enough well, that's to the thing. Maybe... ever buy lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yes, well, that is true too. Maybe it depends on your personality. Um. And maybe that is the best advice, generally speaking. Yes. Obviously, your chances of winning the lottery are so slim that, you know, it's not actually... You're probably better off just setting fire to the money and not bothering spending the time walking down to the uh, the lottery store. They've got a uh, $30 million drawer on tonight, apparently. Do they? I was at the post office earlier. I was half tempted and went, nah. What what would what would be reasonable odds for you to buy a lottery ticket at? What would you need the odds to be? <laughs> Better than and, whatever they are like, now. In Aren't terms they like of like sixty-seven million to one or something. Oh no, it's like hundreds of millions uh, to yeah. one, I think. Um, because it's how many numbers? Are I know there? people do win, but it's really a scam. Oh, of course it's a scam. Of course it's a scam. Um, and I mean the. <laughs> The idea that you would buy a lottery ticket because the winnings are increasing is actually a ridiculous thing, especially when you're looking at large figures like they have in the US. Like when you compare, I don't know what the usual kind of mega millions lottery draw is, but it's probably when it, you know, now that they've had a kind of major prize paid out and it kind of resets, I'd imagine it would be what, 50, 100 million, something like that. Hmm. Um, and let's say you've got. I think when, when they get the really big jackpots, they get, you know, something like 50 million, 100 million people entering, right? So that has dramatically decreased your chances of, well, I mean, I know that your chances of actually winning are based on the numbers themselves, but it's decreased your chances of kind of getting the main draw and winning that main draw. So, I don't know. To me, it just feels like, you know, you're better off kind of trying to go for the lower prizes with the higher odds. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Money I, out of those. I think I'd be more interested if it was a, a lower figure, but the odds were almost somewhat reasonable instead of astronomical. Yes, yes, exactly. And um, in my in my old work, people used to go in for the lottery, and uh, I don't know. I tended to usually say, tell them the odds, and tell them I'd rather set fire to my money than buy a lottery <laughs> ticket. <laughs> Which I don't think they appreciate a lot, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I would, I would totally think that. I don't know whether I'd actually say it. <laughs> I just, I'm quite critical of it because I feel like, you know, you, it kind of speaks that like lottery tickets are bought by a certain type of person, and those are the type of people that I hear kind of talking about how they'd, you know, they'd like to, they'd like to kind of win the money and and just go off and quit their job, but. I just think that they're, you know, they're lying to themselves if they think that a lottery is going to do that for them. They're better off spending the time that they'd usually spend picking, picking lottery tickets and the money they'd usually spend on them, you know, investing it or mm. throwing it into something with a higher chance of return. Yeah. Um, yes, and the other thing is obviously this this lottery winner has decided to remain anonymous, um, and they actually, okay, this is the thing that really got me, and I just I just can't even think about this. They won. So the lottery was actually drawn in, I think, October. Mm-hmm. Um, or the ticket was sold in October. I don't know when exactly the, the draw happened. No, it was drawn in October as well. So it was drawn and sold in October. That person had the ticket in their hand. Now, I don't know what exactly they did with this ticket, but they didn't cash it until a couple of days ago, which means that they've been holding onto it for four months. Could you imagine having a flimsy piece of paper... <laughs> Yeah, I'd be it wanting was, to cash that as soon as possible. It was bought in a store. It wasn't. It wasn't one of those online tickets. It was yeah. bought in a store. Like this is just ridiculous. I, how would you guarantee the safety of such a thing? 
Yeah, I, w- I would want it as soon as possible because, you know, maybe there's some dispute and then maybe the store has, you know, security footage or something that there might be some other way to prove it. Mm-hmm. Four months down the line, who knows what, what there could be of any sort of recourse. Oh, exactly. It's just yeah. absolutely dreadful. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That, it almost that seems like they would have forgotten about it, but then they would check it. Like, that seems very bizarre. Unless they're out of the country or something. The thing is, I think, I remember when this happened, the the huge lottery, and um, they said that there was a winner, but the winner hadn't come forward. Anyone who's bought a ticket has surely then gone to check their ticket if they hadn't already checked it. You would have That's what I would think. Oh, yeah, no, it's just difficult to comprehend. I do understand um, the remaining anonymous part there. Because oh, as soon absolutely. as people know you've got money, people come out of the woodwork from everywhere. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing. I mean, I think there's kind of a different... Um, th- I feel that if you're, you know, if you worked your money and, you know, you've kind of brought yourself into a profitable position, there's a different feeling from the people around you than, than if you've won the lottery and mm. just come into that money instantly. Um, at least that's what I would kind of expect to see. Um, and I don't know why that is exactly, but... Uh, Especially with this huge amount, people will be thinking, oh, you don't need all that, give us a bit. Yeah, just ten grand, or, yeah. or just take the edge off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, obviously that person has has made the right choice. I think, at least. Yes. Foregoing five minutes of fame for slightly more peaceful yes. existence, at least in the short yes. term. Yes, exactly. Thanks again for joining me, Alex. Not a problem, David. Pleasure as always. You can follow and get in touch with us on Twitter at Tangential Soup, and you can. Find this week's show notes for more information about today's topics at tsp.fm slash 204. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider sharing it with anyone you think might also. And we'll talk to you again next week. Bye. Ciao. afternoon for me generally speaking so mm. i thought i wouldn't make it then thursdays would um, do dancing with samantha and and mondays like i sometimes catch up with another friend so i thought tuesday's probably the way to go how you do dance do you yeah we just started actually um we're doing some uh i don't know what you call them what varieties of dance you call them but it's Style. like foxtrot and waltz oh, yeah. and oh it's a whole um, bunch of things is it not tango no have we done tango we haven't done any tango yeah but you kind of go to this dancing place and they do an assessment of you and samantha's done done dancing before um and obviously i haven't um and um they do an assessment and then they kind of recommend a course or you know, i think they recommend the same thing for everybody to be honest but um they kind of chuck you in some group lessons some private lessons um and then um yeah you just kind of you, you rock up you get get a package deal for for 10 lessons which we paid about 500 bucks for Oh, yeah, it's probably not too Just, bad. Uh, so I thought it was—I thought it was pretty good, considering. Especially in the heart of Sydney. Yeah, well, that's it. I've started just learning uh, modern jive. Oh, you did, did you? Because Z is um, has been doing that for years back in Wellington, uh-huh. and she's she's now doing it around the corner here too. But so she's she's trying to teach me, and we've had one private lesson. We've got another couple booked. Yes. Yeah. Mm. It's something I notice when I'm dancing with Samantha, though, is obviously I'm quite a bit taller than her. Z's, Z's quite tall, isn't she? Z's pretty tall. Yeah. Yeah, so you guys wouldn't have quite the height difference we do. No. <laughs> <laughs> at a certain you point, know, it probably is a bit extreme. Yeah. It was so funny looking at those pictures of me when I was younger, because I always remembered being tall, but, I mean, obviously now I'm not really very tall. I mean, I'm tall, obviously. But You were tall, Alex. <laughs> Let's not kid around. Well, six, not I mean, compared six foot to your three. dad, but still. See, for me, six foot three, like I'm tall without being tall, tall. But if I look at those pictures of me as a child, I was significantly taller than everybody else around me. Yeah. Until I like kind of got to. Well, you shut up mm-hmm. faster. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not disputing that I'm tall. Just I think you're you're safely in the tall category. Maybe if you're talking <laughs> about tall, tall, maybe not, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not ridiculously tall, and it's not uncommon for me to meet people who are taller than me, is what I'm saying. No.
Whereas I think when I was a child, I just remembered being tall, but I'm like, oh, I must have just imagined it a bit. But I think I was actually tall, tall. Generally speaking, people have gotten taller. I think they have, yeah. Over the last few decades. Better nutrition, I think, is, is what's yeah. been touted as the reason. 